Okay, awesome. So next question is this. How do I go about working in immersive spaces? Is there a good on-ramp for that? How do you work with things like environments? How do you work with things that are fully immersive or progressively immersive? And that's a great question. The answer to that that I'm going to take, I guess, pathwise in order to give you a good explanation is we'll talk about skyboxes. How you work with skyboxes is a great way of touching immersive scenes right away. It gives you a good overview as to how they work, what you can do with it, and how effective little things are in the grand scheme of creating an immersive environment for your user. So. In this case, I've already actually created the demo app. Won't create that with you here on the screen. Same thing, haven't changed anything in this view or the content view. So it'll be the same standard show immersive space window, except in immersive view, I've taken out everything except for the bare bone body here. So reality view, content in, then nothing else. And what I'll do is just progressively reveal what was in here. So I've got a function here that creates a skybox. And for those of you who aren't aware, I'll have some examples I guess playing right now as to what these are, what these look like, but the long story short of it is the Vision Pro is able to display a 360 degree image very effectively. And with that in mind, you can take 360 degree images and warp them around the user to make them feel like they are in the center of a new sort of world or environment. So in this case, we've got a function to create a skybox, which is the name for these 360 degree images that surround a user. And this is basically how it works. So if you think about the skybox as a sphere, as like almost like a globe, except the user, instead of being on the outside looking at a globe, they're at the dead center of it. We say, okay, user's inside, a big dark sphere. What can we do if it's hollow to make it feel like somewhere else? Well, we'll take these 360 degree images and we'll just place it on the inside of the sphere. So that's what's happening here. We're putting the user inside of a big object and we're putting an image around the inside of it. So they're seeing an image applied in the form of a texture to the inside of a sphere. And to them, it looks like they're looking at a whole different sort of world. And this is the way we do it. So here, instead of creating an actual scene in reality kit, which is where you can actually hand design all your objects, all your sorts of uh, 3D models, all your audio, things like that, we are going to create this all programmatically. First thing we're gonna do is create a large sphere by getting a mesh resource and generating a sphere with a radius of whatever you want. In this case, it's in meters. I selected two because the uh, moving distance for a user wearing the Vision Pro is really minimal. If you move even just a little bit, you start to get warnings and you have less immersion because it's worried about you hitting something. So uh, a radius of two meters all the way across four meters is plenty of space for this use case it felt like. So that's what I have said as feel free to increase or decrease as you desire. The thing to keep in mind is your image is gonna have to fill the inside of this object. So the bigger it is, the more stretched your image might look and the closer it is, the more high def it might look. But if it gets too close, it also doesn't feel too immersive. So set that value however you like. Uh, we're gonna add an unlit material to, uh, or we're gonna define a skybox material as an unlit material. Just a way of setting almost like an initial material for this actual object. And then we're going to get our texture. And the way that I've done this here, uh, so to let my texture equal, try to get a resource and load it named demo. And in my case, I dropped an image called demo. Let's see if I can get this any bigger. Nope. I dropped an image called demo into my asset folder. If you don't have a 360 degree image, what I love doing is jumping over to Blockade Labs. If you haven't heard of this, it's really cool. It's like a ChatGPT style uh, text input sort of box here, but it creates 360 degree images. So in this case, let's say I want a spooky graveyard at nighttime. And I can use this improv, enhanced prompt sort of style. You can click different uh, versions of what you want this to look like. I tend to really like, let's see, I'll look a little bit here, render, the stylized CGI realism. I feel like it looks really bright and uh, just fine, the fine line of almost like cartoony. So we'll hit generate. It'll take 15, 20 seconds. And again, if you have a 360 degree image, feel free to use whatever you already have. This is just a really fun way of doing something a little bit more custom. That'd be fun for the sake of this. Uh, tutorial. So while this is downloading, we'll give it another couple seconds. This one's not a bad one either, honestly. It looks really cool. Big wide open sort of desert area. And again, 360, so you can go all the way up and all the way down. And this one's great too, because the top didn't look that confusing. So 
Okay, here we are. A little bit of a spooky graveyard feel. Lots of tombstones. And it is definitely dark. So, uh, cool 360 degree image here. I will select download. I will do PNG. This one takes a second usually to download as well. But again, a minute spent here for something that's truly custom. I think you get a couple, maybe it's 10 or 20 free attempts at doing this per month, which is pretty cool. And we have that now here. I will click it. I will bring it into my assets. And I will name this one um, Demo 2. So we'll go back to this immersive view. Again, we have the skybox. We ask for demo. I'm going to update this to demo two. And then we set the color to this texture. So we have an unlit material. The material's not doing anything, really. And then we have our texture, which is what's applying this uh, image that we just downloaded to the actual object. And right now, that image is going to be on the outside of the sphere. So if we were able to look at this right now, it would be a sphere with that image wrapped around it. And we've set the color now to that. If that doesn't work, then we'll error out, but shouldn't be a problem. And then now we just create the entity to place in the scene. So uh, we said we want to create an entity called Skybox Entity. We want to set the components to, uh, we want the mesh to be the large sphere, which we define up top. And we want the materials to be uh, on the material that we then apply this texture to. So we have a sphere now completely uh, wrapped with this image. And the last thing we'll do before returning it is we will just take it and we will invert the sphere. So again, this is the user being inside the sphere. How do we get them to see this uh, image? Well, we create the skybox environment, wraps on the inside, places them in the center. And this is what is inverting that right now for the user. And then we return this. And up here in the reality view, all we have to do now, oh no, what have I done, is uh, let skybox equal create skybox and then we will go content dot add skybox and we'll see if we get any errors okay there we go we'll run this now in the simulator we've added the skybox to it See if it builds for us. If it does, we'll have it popping up here in just a moment. Here we are, we're in the space. I say show immersive space, and wow, here we are now on the inside here. If we look around, it is a trippy sort of environment. And again, it doesn't communicate quite as well on the headset. It's definitely still interesting, or on the simulator, excuse me. But I'll jump in the headset in a second. I'll show you what this looks like in there. And I'll be curious to see what you guys make if you do this as well. So uh, give me one second. We'll boot up, and we will show you what this looks like inside. OK, here we go. We have it loading up now. I'll keep my head still so we don't get motion sickness. <laughs> OK, so now when we click Show Immersive Space, it should bring us to the center of the sphere. And here we are. Ooh, and it definitely looks a lot better in the headset. Definitely cool vibe in here. And again, uh, very easy to do. You can make that image that gets loaded in here dynamic. So you can switch the environment a lot if you're a user. But yeah, really cool. I think first kind of step towards working with immersive scenes shows you how easy it is to really ramp up from nothing into something pretty cool. And we'll talk, I guess, next about layering more things into this, like uh, weather or sound. So uh, next question.